The idea was if we could develop this, we would help golf course superintendents develop programs that would manage dollar spot effectively and as a side benefit potentially save them an application or two. Uh, there were models developed in the past, but they either over predicted or under predicted the disease. So nobody really used a prediction model. Essentially, relative humidity was the biggest driving factor for dollar spot development. And in particular, when relative humidity was above 70% for four to five consecutive days, as when we typically saw new spots develop. Then we refined it a little bit more and added in a minimum air temperature component and a maximum air temperature component. So the minimum was 50 degrees Fahrenheit, the maximum was 95. And the reason for that really relates to relative humidity, that you, in order for it to get cold, humidity has to leave the air. In order for it to get really hot, typically humidity has to leave. So humidity is definitely the biggest driving factor with those two shoulder temperatures on either side. The model itself is a basically a logistic equation uh, that you plug in the parameters, relative humidity, uh, mean and max air temps, and then uh, how much risk you're willing to take, 20, uh, 30, 40, whatever it might be. And essentially it spits out a probability of whether or not you're going to have disease. The idea behind the risk, one of the things we're most proud of is it allows superintendents at their own facility to decide for themselves how much are you willing to accept. In our research, we found that 20% was the most accurate prediction. Essentially, when we set a 20% threshold like we did in the research, it was truly a preventative uh, application. So we would never really have disease out in the field. And as such, we had phenomenal control, very similar to a calendar-based application of every two weeks. And to me, that's the greatest lesson because with something like Dollar Spot, once the disease develops, even the best chemistry may fail. That's the burden of the manager taking too much risk. That in some cases, you get too much inoculum built up, it can be much harder to control. So that's a good point to think about with these risk thresholds is really try to set them to where you're as preventative as you can afford to be. For those in heavy dollar spot pressure, I would suggest you start watching your own data about even mid-March to the 1st of April. Uh, especially in this given age where weather seems to be so unusual, I don't think we can count on a May 15th anymore. That we really need to be watching it because that fungus, we came up with this four to five day average because we found in other research that it really takes about four to five days for the fungus to grow and infect uh, and cause symptoms within the plant. So that's where I would suggest start using it about maybe 1st of April, depending on where you are. Scouting and monitoring on your own is never going to be done away with, despite how robust a model is. Models work for certain environments. And what we tried to do developing the model was put it in areas where we typically would see dollar spot first. Uh, but that being said, we can't predict where it's going to happen on every golf course in every microclimate that may happen. Some of the key benefits we hope they see from this model is a savings of an application, right? And as such, as good or better dollar spot control than they had in the past.